Yo, what is good everyone and welcome back to the channel. Hope y'all are having a great weekend so far. Today I'm going to be breaking down some of my favorite tournament or GPP plays for this week 10 NFL DraftKings main slate. And like I always do, I'm going to break down a couple of my favorite game stacks, some of my favorite individual plays and stacks, and one of my favorite value plays. With that being said, let's dive into my spreadsheet here. And we're going to kick things off here like we always do in the top left hand corner with those highest implied game totals and I talked about this in my cash plays video yesterday make sure you go check that out it's not projecting to be a very high scoring slate this week we have just three games that are creeping around the 50 point mark outside of that it looks like it could be relatively low scoring and then as always I got the highest implied team totals listed behind me there you can always use that as a reference point as I'm going through some of my favorite tournament plays. With that being said, let's dive into this first game stack that I like between the Dolphins and Browns. Now, of the three games that are creeping around the 50 implied total mark, this game here is projecting to be the lowest owned. Now, it is expensive to stack these guys up here, especially Tua with Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle, but we've seen the explosiveness from this offense this year. You're getting two wide receivers here that can pretty much win in any matchup. And then I'm running it back there with Donovan Peoples-Jones. We need to find some inexpensive players here to put in our lineup, considering how expensive that Miami side is. Donovan Peoples-Jones has been good this year, though, considering he's a wide receiver number two at $4,300. He's seeing around a 19% target share. And this Miami secondary isn't the best either, ranking 31st overall and past DVOA. So that's why I like him, but we can mix in a Harrison Bryant, considering that David Njoku is out. If you can find some other cheap plays, mix in an Amari Cooper, uh, but Donovan Peoples-Jones is my preferred play. I think Kareem Hunt is really interesting as well in the low 5K range, but the main stack here is Tua with Tyreek and Jalen Waddle. They should have their way against this Cleveland Browns defense, who rank 24th overall in total defensive DBOA. They just don't have the cornerbacks that can slow those two guys down. Now hear me out with this next stack here. I know you're probably thinking we're going with the Browns. Broncos this week. Look, I'm by no means a Broncos fan. Yes, I'm wearing the Denver shirt right now, but that's because I live out here. I'm through and through a Minnesota Vikings fan, just so everyone is aware. Hey, you can see there, I got Case Keenum and Steph Diggs. I play with my brain for the most part, not the heart. Now with this stack here on the Denver side, I, like I said, I might be taking the bait here, but coming off of a bye, they're sitting in a really good spot against the Tennessee Titans. For starters, this secondary is not very good for the Titans. They've allowed 20.8 fantasy points per game to opposing quarterbacks. That's the fourth most in the NFL. And they've allowed 40.5 PPR points per game to opposing wide receivers. That is the third most in the NFL. On top of that, they're missing four starters here this week in Jeffrey Simmons and Bud Dupree, losing those two two guys is a huge loss on top of Amani Hooker and Zach Cunningham. So I like stacking up Russ here with Jerry Judy and Cartland Sutton. DraftKings is teasing us. They're making it very affordable to get those guys in your lineup. And you could even mix in their tight end Greg Dulcich at $3,400, giving you even more money to play with. And then running it back there with Derrick Henry, because this Broncos defense has not been very good against the run, ranking 25th overall in rush DVOA. So this this is tournament only. I want nothing to do with Russ in my cash lineup or his wide receivers, but in the Millie Maker, you bet your ass I'm going to be sprinkling that in this week. Now, folks, before we dive into some of my favorite individual plays and stacks here, if you could like this video and subscribe to the channel, I would greatly appreciate that. That really helps me out. All right, now let's dive into these individual plays here, kicking it off with the quarterbacks. And yes, I'm going to go with the revenge narrative here this week with Case Keenum and the Buffalo Bills. Now, as I record this, Josh Allen has not technically been ruled out yet. But like I mentioned in my cash plays video yesterday, I just don't foresee him starting. Listening across the industry, nobody really believes that he's going to play. And it makes sense for the Bills to do that, right? Why would you let the Vikings know that you're going to be starting your backup quarterback early in the week? And a 
allows them to game prep against Case Keenum. Keep the Vikings guessing to say the least. So yeah, I'm going to run with that revenge narrative. Plus, this Vikings secondary has been kind of mediocre this year. Definitely susceptible, ranking 16th in past DVOA, so kind of the mid-pack. However, they will be missing their starting cornerback, Cam Dantzler, this week. And they're going to be replacing him with rookie cornerback, Caleb Evans. Evans made some big plays last week, but he's a rookie cornerback. And Steph Diggs and company can definitely win in that matchup. They're also going to be missing their starting defensive tackle, Delvin Tomlinson, which is a huge hit for them. Plus, on top of all of that, Case Keenum is dirt cheap here at $5,000, which allows you to do a lot with the rest of your lineup. Now, moving over here to the running backs, first thing I want to mention is that I highlighted pretty much the chalky running backs in my cash plays video yesterday. I have no problem playing those guys in my tournament lineups, but you're going to need to get contrarian elsewhere if you do that. For example, the Bronco stack will allow you to get contrarian and then play some of those chalkier running back plays. Plus, being that the Bronco stack is affordable, you can certainly do that. But two guys here that are flying under the radar a little bit are Jonathan Taylor and Tony Pollard. Jonathan Taylor here, I get it. He's been banged up most of this year. Really hasn't been that impressive when he's on the field outside of week one. But does have a good matchup here this week against the Raiders, who have allowed 27.1 PPR points per game to opposing running backs this year. That's the fourth most in the NFL, and it sounds like Jonathan Taylor is healthy. So we got a good running back here in a good matchup with a new head coach that will probably want to get the ball in his best offensive player's hands as much as possible. So being that he's projected around 5% ownership, even though he hasn't been good since week one, I don't mind it as a tournament play at all. And then with Tony Pollard there, the reason he's flying under the radar right now is because Zeke is expected back this week. And for what it's worth, I hope that Zeke does suit up because if he gets denounced out, Tony Pollard is going to gain a bunch of steam heading into Sunday. And I don't think Zeke is going to play all that much if he does suit up coming off of that knee injury. I'm well aware that Jerry Jones loves to play his guys that he's paying big money to, but with that knee injury, it certainly makes things a little bit different. Plus, on top of that, Zeke has not been very good this year, and Tony Pollard has been. And he's got a great matchup here against this Green Bay Packers run defense, who have not been able to stop the run pretty much all year long, ranking 31st overall in rush DVOA. Now, if Zeke does get announced out, I still like Tony Pollard, but just know his ownership is going to fly through the roof. And then we got the wide receivers here, and I'm rolling with the double revenge narrative, stacking up Keenum and Diggs against their former team in the Minnesota Vikings. Yeah, I talked about this when I was going through Keenum. This Vikings secondary has definitely been susceptible at times this year. Believe me, I watch them on a weekly basis, and Diggs is one of, if not the best route runners in the NFL. Targets will be thrown his way, especially considering there is a little chemistry there between Keenum and Diggs. Let's not forget the miracle play that happened against the New Orleans Saints when those two were on the Vikings. Plus, Diggs should avoid Patrick Peterson for the most part in this game, and it looks like he's going to be matched up against Sullivan, who's allowed an 82% catch rate this year. Diggs can definitely win in that matchup, or the rookie cornerback in Evans. So yeah, I really like Diggs here this week, even though he's playing with the backup quarterback in Keenum. Again, those two have had chemistry in the past. Now, I did talk about Chris Olave in my cash plays video yesterday, so I'll keep this short and sweet, but it's a good matchup here against the Steelers, who rank 21st overall in past DVOA. Olave's seen a 27% target share this year and almost 42% of the team's air yards. He's been fantastic as a rookie, and I'll go back to him again here this week. I then got Christian Kirk there of the Jacksonville Jags, and hey, I have no problem stacking up that game between the Chiefs and Jags this week. Just know it is going to be very popular and you're going to need to find ways to make your lineups unique. But you can see I got Travis Kelsey there. Don't be shocked if I pair him with Patrick Mahomes in my lineup. But running it back with the Christian Kirk, talked about Travis Etienne in my cash plays video. I think he's a fine play. But Kirk here should win matchups against this secondary for the Chiefs, ranked 24th overall in past DVOA. Plus, Kirk has had some really nice games and shown some really nice chemistry with Trevor Lawrence. He's around a 
24% target share this year and seeing 27% of the team's air yards while ranking seventh in the NFL in red zone targets with 11. So I love to see him getting looks in the red zone and towards the goal line. And then I got George Pickens there of the Pittsburgh Steelers. For what it's worth, I really like Pat Fryermuth as well. Again, talked about him in my cash plays video. I hate to reference that so much, but yeah, I also want to be very transparent with you guys. Guys that I talk about in my cash plays video, absolutely mixed into my tournaments. I just find different ways with my tournament plays here to try and get unique. But George Pickens, I kind of like the matchup here because he's eighth in the NFL in deep targets, and the New Orleans Saints rank second this year in deep touchdowns allowed. So at $5,000, a little cheaper wide receiver play, definitely don't mind that, especially considering that Chase Claypool is now out of Pittsburgh, making Pickens the solidified wide receiver number two in that offense. We then got a couple of tight ends here for you, and there are some really nice cheap tight ends here this week. Again, talked about in my cash plays video, but I have no problem spending up on the tournament side of things. Travis Kelsey and TJ Hawkinson both stick out to me. I don't need to advocate for Travis Kelsey. We know the upside that he provides, but I will say this. Great matchup here against the Jaguars, who rank 32nd in DVOA against the tight ends this year. Literally the worst in the NFL. And then TJ Hawkinson did not miss a beat in his first game as a Minnesota Viking. Surprisingly played 91% of the offensive snaps and saw a 23% target share. Way bigger numbers than I would have anticipated, and albeit a tough matchup here against the Bills, I do like his upside in this offense going forward. And then I got a few defenses there for you. Defense is kind of a crapshoot this week. It's the least important position we roster on a weekly basis, but usually can go, okay, that's a good matchup, that's a good matchup, that defense is mispriced. This week, it's pretty dead on and not my favorite by any means, but I got three here for you. Broncos going up against the Tennessee Titans. I like this a lot more for them if Malik Willis does start. Steelers are getting TJ Watt back. They got to get more pressure on that defensive line. Plus, the Red Rockin' Andy Dalton is not afraid to take sacks and has been capable of turning the ball over. And then the Indianapolis Colts have been a solid unit this year, ranking 11th in total defensive DVOA. Going up against the Raiders offense, who have been underwhelming this year, missing Renfro and Waller this week, and have not been afraid to take sacks this season. And as always, going to wrap up the spreadsheet here with a low-priced option or low 4K wide receiver play. Yes, I changed it up because the 3K range for wide receivers is gross, and I want nothing to do with it. But Matt Collins here at $4,200, I think, is in a great value spot, considering that Hunter Renfro and Darren Waller are going to miss this week, essentially making him the number two pass catcher in this offense behind Devontae Adams, and he's shown some nice upside here this year. Actually had that 30-point DraftKings performance back in week three against the Tennessee Titans, and this is a little tougher matchup for sure here this week against the Indianapolis Colts. I just talked about their defense, but considering the price here and the deep threat appeal, I do like him on the tournament side of things. All right, everyone, that is going to wrap up this video here for today. As always, thank you all for taking the time out of your day to watch the content here on this channel. If you could like this video and subscribe to the channel, I would greatly appreciate that. Let's have ourselves a great weekend here, folks. Let's win some money here on this main slate. In the meantime, I'm out of here.